Let's dig into a Drupal 8 site and start looking at performance-related components and settings. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and install your Drupal 8 site. We'll call it Race Car Mania because I'm not creative enough to come up with something better. And we want something related to speed, just for fun. Once you've installed your site, go ahead and create one article. You can call it choosing a transmission for your car. Again, probably not a great article title, but just we'll go with it to keep things simple. You don't necessarily have to give your article an image, but do fill in some text for the body. I like to grab my dummy text from blindtextgenerator.com. Just copy a portion of this and paste it into your body field as you're creating your article. Go ahead and pause now if you need to take a second to do that. So once you have your website set up with one article on it, the first thing we're gonna do is go to extend and we're gonna check to make sure that two specific modules are installed and enabled. They are core modules, so they should be enabled. They're supposed to be enabled by default, but let's just double check. We're gonna look for internal dynamic page cache and internal page cache. Again, these should be enabled by default, but we're gonna check just to make sure, and we do need to enable them if they are not enabled already. Let's talk about what these are. We can see the descriptions here. Let's actually look at internal page cache first. Caches pages for anonymous users use when an external page cache is not available. So what this does, if we look back at our diagram, this is the basic caching mechanism of Drupal 8. It caches pages for anonymous users in the database so it can do one query for that page and not have to put all of the pieces together every time a browser requests that page. Again, this is specifically for anonymous users, and both of these modules actually have pretty good documentation. If we click on help, we'll get some more detailed information here. Pages requested by anonymous users are stored the first time they are requested and then are reused. Again, this is the basic concept of caching. One important thing about the internal page cache, since this is for anonymous users, if you have a website, especially like an e-commerce site or something like that, that has pages that can change per user, even if they are anonymous users, such as you may have a shopping cart functionality that you don't have to be logged in to use. You obviously would have to be logged in once you want to check out. You would need some way to do that. In most cases, if you just want to have a shopping cart that an anonymous user can fill up, you don't want to be caching pages, you may want to turn this off and use some other custom solution because this will cache pages and deliver the same page to all anonymous users. So that's really going to mess up functionality like that. But in most other cases, especially on non-e-commerce sites, things like that, you want to leave this on. The internal dynamic page cache is basically the same thing, but this is for any user. Specifically, this is designed for users that are logged in. This is an improvement that Drupal 8 has over Drupal 7. It is able to cache information. It is able to cache pages for logged in users, which Drupal 7 was not able to do. It's able to do so in a way where, to where it is able to maintain the dynamic information, the user specific information, but still cache everything else that it can. Drupal 7 could not do that. We can view the documentation here also if we want. And we can look at the online documentation for either of these by clicking this link. And we really get some good detailed information here for dy dynamic page cache as well as internal page cache. So if you're interested in reading more about these, I recommend you check out this documentation. It is pretty thorough.